um, inspiring that 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 I actually want to. I'll release a gem later uh, called Active Reform, which has this code, uh, and it has the blessing of the Reform uh, the creator here. So, yep. I, I'll just wait for the GitHub uh, stars. So um, I'm going to talk about cryptography, um, the, the most exciting topic, said no one ever. Uh, so um, my name is Christopher uh, Rigor, and uh, I'm Krieger on, um, on Twitter and GitHub. So uh, I met uh, Tiago yesterday, and he told me that he was so excited to see me, and, and I thought to myself, Wow, at least one person likes to hear my talk. And then he goes, because your Twitter name, Krigo, he's a famous, famous music musician who writes shitty music. So I, ha I had to search who, who this guy is, and uh, this is him. So, so I'm looking for someone to bleach my hair and, you know. My, my ticket to stardom here in Brazil. So I work for Engineered. We, we don't make music. Um, oh, we do? <laughs> uh, I'm the support team lead for Asia Pacific. Um, we have a cloud platform uh, that's built on top of uh, Amazon Web Services. So uh, we support the South America region. So you could you know, boot up servers um, that are here in Brazil. I also organize RubyCon Philippines, which be, would be at the end of the month. Um, and you know, I like to invite everyone to go. Uh, if not this year, next year, we always have it at the same time, like end of the end of March, early April. Um, yeah. So Manila. Um, in case any, of you, I guess most of you doesn't know, is far, far from from here. Like it would take you more than a day. To, to get here, um, you have to pass through the U.S. or Europe. So, okay. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, public key cryptography, um, SSL and TLS, and some tips for Rails applications. So there's no background needed. So you don't need to know anything about cryptography to understand this talk. Um, if you're a developer, you should be able to get something out of out of this. So first, why, why do we need uh, cryptography, right? Why, why do we need to encrypt data? So because when you log into a site and you enter your username and password, you'll be sh you can be sure that someone's reading, reading your, your, your data, someone's um, saving all your traffic. So what you do is you encrypt that data so only your browser and the server, the recipient, could, um, could, could see the data. So let's have a brief description of symmetric key cryptography, which just um, uses one key to encrypt and decrypt your data. So it will be easier to, to show an example. So let's say you want to say hello to someone. Um, so your message is hello, and you want to encrypt it using a key, let's say my secret key. So um, with symmetric key cryptography, your recipient should have the same key, which is my secret key. Uh, and when you use it to encrypt data, it will become this ciphertext that no one understands. So you won't, so people won't see your me your original message hello, and only the um, the recipient would be able to to decrypt it to to your original message. So that's symmetric key cryptography. But public key cryptography, um, you use uh, you use two keys. Uh, there's a public key to encrypt your data and a private key to to decrypt your data. So anyone could see this public key. Um, you know, I mean, the person next to you can see um, the, the, the public key and the ciphertext, and it doesn't matter, because you'd need the private key to decrypt that data. So the terms are easy to understand. Uh, public key is public. Private key is private. So when, when someone created this site, uh, privatekeycheck.com, and it asks you to upload your private key to check how secure it is, like you can try it, and like you will get this reply, like, why on earth would you post it here? Now it's surely not. 
Um, so because privacy is private, like you don't email it to anyone, you don't give it to your coworker. I mean, you, you guard your laptop because your private, your SSH private keys are in there. So that's that's how public key cryptography works. So. So we, we'll talk about uh, RSA, which is one public key crypto system, um, which is uh, the, the easiest to explain, the easiest to understand. So RSA, um, in RSA you deal with three numbers. So um, I'll, th those numbers are E, N, and D. Um, and E and N are, are your public key, and D is private key. Um, so uh, an easier way to understand what, what these numbers are, are, are or to remember is they form a word end, and since we are Rubyists, we, we, we know, you know, we're familiar with this word. Another, another way to, to, to remember the numbers are EN um, is, are, are used to encrypt and D is used to decrypt that data. So here's an example of three numbers, uh, E, N, and D. Um, I'll tell you later how we, we got them, but but here's an example. Um, so let's say we, we want to uh, encrypt um, 42, right? So if you want to encrypt 42, all you need to do is uh, get 42, raise it to E modulo N. So this is a, this is a basic math you know, equation. It just deals with uh, exponents and modulus. Um, Everyone, I assume, would know um, about it. Um, so plugging in E and N, you'll actually get 2,557. So instead of sending 42, you would send this other number, 2,557, right? So that's your ciphertext. And you'd need the, the, the private key to decrypt that. So you'd need D. Um, so the, and to decrypt that, the equation is just as simple. You get you know, your ciphertext, you raise it to D, and you get the modulo n, right? So once you plug the numbers in, you'll get 42. And, and that's how public key cryptography works. Um, it, has, it provides you with a one-way function. Um, from 42, you convert it to 2,557. But if you don't have D, uh, you won't be able to get 42. So you need that private key. So what are, what are those three numbers, right? Uh, what, what's E, N, and D? So N is actually the product of two prime numbers, so you start with that. So if you've heard uh, cryptography needing prime numbers, uh, that's, because of, uh, that's because you, you start with them. You generate uh, prime numbers. So in our example, the prime numbers are actually small, just 61 and 53. But in real life, you'll use you know, very, very big prime numbers. And E is not unique, and it's usually you know, 65,537. There's an explanation for that, but you know, we, we don't have time for that. So you, you know, just believe me that it's 65,537. And then D, you just compute it from, from all the numbers that you have so far. So just a short recap, you, know, you start with the private numbers, you, which are private. Uh, sorry, you start with the prime numbers. You get an E, you get the, the the product of the prime numbers are public, are n, and it's public, and then you can compute d. And I just need to take a break, so, yeah. <laughs> so, um, those are small numbers, but let's look at an actual, you know, an actual RSA, um, RSA um, keys. So this is a, an SSH key, like, so you, you, have, you have them, I assume, on your computer. And if you actually run this, like open SSL RSA dash text dash in, you would actually see the three numbers that I mentioned, the, your E, your N, and D, and some additional information. So you would see public exponent here, which is 65,537, that's E, which I told you earlier, so it's usually that. And you would see the modulus, uh, which is a 2048-bit key. Um, so if, if, you, if you've heard SSL certificates or SSH keys being 2048 bits, um, that's N. So your N is, uh, has, has that, um, is that big, uh, 2048 bits. Um, it's actually a, it's a 617-digit number. Um, and 
that's that's the security of RSA. Like it's public, but you can't get the prime numbers that generated that. Um, so why why do we use 2048? I remember when I started, you know, when I started working, um, I have 1,024 um, bit keys, but you know, we had to change them to 2048, and that's because um, in 2009, uh, a 768 bit key was um, was factored. Um, successfully by, by, by computers, and you know those are just the public information. You don't know what government agencies are capable of. So you know we moved to 2048. So you would also see the the private private exponent um, since this is a RSA key, RSA private key. You would see the um, your private key as well, 616 digit number, and you could use the same um, the same formula. So even with those big numbers. You would, this would still work. So you would get you know, a very big ciphertext. And to, to decrypt that, you could use the same um, equation, and you would go back to 42. So, and, and that's the whole, that's, um, that's RSA. Like you, you, there's just two similar equations, uh, mod, um, raise it to an exponent, and then get the modulo. So that's, that's, the, that's the whole uh, security of RSA. So that's just one example. We also have Diffie-Hellman, if, if you've heard about it. Um, it. It uses prime numbers as well and you know, exponents and modulus, but it's not just real numbers. It, it deals with groups. Uh, it's, it's, it's a term in, in math. So for example, this is a group of uh, integers, modulus 7. Um, so you deal with prime numbers, but they're very, very large, um, large numbers. So. And then elliptic curves as well. You could use this with Diffie-Hellman. Um, it uses points, a group of points instead of, integ instead of integers. So um, they, they're, more, they're, they're harder to, to explain, harder to understand. And RSA is far, far um, much, much easier to, to, um, to, you know, to understand. So uh, with elliptic curves, you, you get smaller keys. So as I mentioned earlier, you had 2048-bit keys, now you'll have smaller keys. So yeah, just a short recap of, of, of public key cryptography. You, you know, public key cryptography provides a one-way function, uh, and you need the private key to, to, dec to decrypt that, um, to decrypt your, your data. So uh, one, one use of public key cryptography is SSL TLS. This is a protocol for uh, secure communication, not just used for web browsing, but um, it, it's used for other things. But um, for, for this topic, we'll only talk about uh, HTTPS, which is just HTTP protocol on top of SSL. So I told you earlier, username and password, uh, they'll be in plain text if you just use HTTP. But if you use HTTPS, they would be encrypted. So. Um, SSL uh, was released 20 years ago now, uh, version 2, uh, version 3 um, a year later, and uh, moved to TLS 1, 1.1, and 1.2. So if you go to any browser, you could also see your, you know, your RSA certificate. You would also be able to see the numbers that I mentioned. So you would see, um, you would see E, which is, again, uh, 65,537. Then you could... The public key there, it says, you know, 256 bytes, that's 2,000. You, you would see the key size is 2,048 bits. So, and since it's, this is the certificate, obviously, you won't find the private key here. So, so a simple way of looking at it is when, when your browser goes to a site, um, it would go to, you know, it would, you would get the, the public key. And then you could start communicating. Uh, your browser to your server. But what actually happens is when the server sends you the public key, your browser encrypts another key. So, so you use a, a shared key, which is actually a symmetric key. So public key cryptography is just for, for starting the whole communication, but then you'll, you'll, you'll create another key and use this uh, for communication. So, we actually, so that's actually, that becomes a symmetric key cryptography, and if you've seen these acronyms, DES, RC4, AES, those are um, the um, the symmetric key ciphers. So um, 
there's just a lot of acronyms with, with you know, TLS, uh, RSA, um, but you know, they, they are very different. Like these are used for, for the symmetric key um, cryptography. Um, and the attacks are mostly you know, due to these ciphers you know, um, on, on, the, uh, on RC4, for example. So this actually, I enjoyed researching this part of the talk because I could, you know, the, the, the names of, of, of the vulnerabilities are, are you know, um, you, could, you could show a picture of a dog in here and it would be relevant. So if you've heard of the attacks, you know, you've had uh, Poodle, uh, Beast, Beast, be, Beast. <laughs> so, um, so the Beast was... Uh, from 2011, it's attack on block cipher. So it's an attack on DES and AES. Um, fortunately, there were some client side fixes, so um, we people didn't really get off of DES and AES. Um, but if you wanted to fix um, the vulnerability, then the recommendation in 2011 was to use RC4. Uh, but if you've heard, I mean, a year or two ago, people started saying not to use RC4. So, and this is what's, what makes you know, uh, cryptography hard. You have to be updated on the current development. Like what, what works in 2011 doesn't work uh, today anymore. So Poodle, for example, uh, is an attack on SSL v3 and, and the block ciphers. So, but people have decided you know, to stop using SSL v3 instead of trying to, to work around the issue. So, you shouldn't be using SLV3 now. It's, it was a big issue when Poodle was announced. Um, another vulnerability is Heartbleed. Um, it's actually not a um, problem. It's not an attack on the TLS protocol, but it was a, a problem on OpenSSL, which is the, the code. Uh, but it was so popular because it had, had a cool logo. It had, uh, you know, it had a website. Um, but you know, a few days ago, like three days ago, a f the, the freak attack was just announced, and, but it, it doesn't have its own logo. So you know, some weird guy on the internet said, you know, the, the freak SLTLS attack doesn't have a very cool logo, so I'm not sure if I should be worried. So, uh, and, and yeah, and that's true. I mean, the, the, the people, you know, the, the more popular, the, the way people present you know, the attacks, that, that's, that's how you know, people fix their, <laughs> their, their, you know, their servers. So, um, so this is brand new. I mean, you should be updating your, your Android, your I, um, iPhones. You should be upgrading. Uh, we're all affected. Uh, I think they're still releasing the, the, the fixes. So, so what, what should you use, right? If you've, if you've managed servers, um, you know, there's a lot of different configuration. So for now, I could say, you know, use TLS 1.2, it's the newest, and use AES for, for encrypting. Um, so just to, to, you know, to, to add more to the conversation about the TLS handshake, um, you know, when the server sends the public key, that's RSA, right? You know your RSA certificate. And, um, and then the browser encrypts shared key, you can use RSA as well. And then the browser encrypts your data and you use AES. But actually, for number two, when you use RSA, that's not actually recommended. So what's actually recommended is to use Diffy Hellman and not RSA. So here we introduce you know, another acronym, you know, ECDHE, which is elliptic curve, Diffy Hellman, and then E is for ephemeral, uh, which means that it, pro it, it provides perfect forward secrecy. So what does that mean? So actually, when you're using HTTPS now, like when you're logging into your uh, email, someone could be saving your traffic. So even if they can't decrypt it, they could save it now. And then a year later, if they're able to get the private key, they'd be able to decrypt your data even if it's a year old. So even if, you know, even if the traffic was you know, a few years ago, you know, it might still be you know, saved somewhere. I mean, you just don't know. So that's why you, you, you need to start using a, you know, a perfect forward secrecy. So your, um, the recommendation is to use this uh, TLS 1.2, AES, and ECDHE. So um, moving to, um, to your Rails applications, uh, or Ruby applications, actually. 
Um, the recommendation is not to use SLV3. I mean, we've discussed Poodle. Um, you know, you shouldn't be using that anymore. But then, do not set your SL version to TLS v1. Um, well, you could do that, but then you'll just be restricting your code to use v1. Um, you, you could have, there are available uh, versions, 1.1, 1.2. You won't be able to use them. So the, the actual recommendation is to set it to SL v2.3, which is very counterintuitive because it, you don't want version 2, you don't want version 3, but you, you should set it to SL v2.3. So you could get the highest version available. But in, in, in addition to that, you should set an option not to use SL v3. So basically, use SL v2.3, but not version 3. And that's actually what uh, Ruby did uh, a few months ago. If you remember, uh, these versions were released, 2.14 and these other versions. They, those settings that I mentioned, they made it the default. So that means before that, um, like the, the, the settings weren't the, the most secured uh, settings for, for TLS. So, but now, I mean, if you have your, um, if you, you have this version, uh, you have the, the, the secured settings. And this is my favorite. Like, you, if you're a Ruby programmer, you, you, you would have run into this certificate verify failed. And you, I would go to, you know, to Google and search what it means how to fix that, and everyone would just say, set your verify mode to, to none. And, and that would fix it. I mean, like, if you don't know what you're doing, that would fix the problem. But, you know, you're making your code not secure. should set, set it to verify peer and then fix the, the main problem. So, um, message encryptor, this was released in Rails 4. Uh, but, again, you know, be careful when using, you know, code uh, like this is, for example, from Stack Overflow. Like it had that, you know, green check mark, which means it was accepted, but that doesn't make it correct. Um, like this code is okay if you're just encrypting one data, but if you use it multiple times, uh, it's actually not recommended or not recommended to use the same key multiple times for encrypting different data because then your it would uh, be your security would be useless. So the, the correct way is actually to, um, to generate uh, keys every time using this uh, key generator. So actually, if you, look, if you read the, the Rails um, source code and you know how they did it, um, it's, it's good that you have you know, something to, to look at. But if you just miss one line, like for example, if you don't set one, you know, one value, then the whole thing is actually insecure. So you have to know what you're doing to, to, to be able to encrypt that data. And, and the, the, the better, better way is to you know, use a, a Ruby library that just, um, um, that's just used for encryption. So here, this is an RB NACL gem. Uh, it uses salt. Uh, it provides you know, the, the, the encryption um, that you need. Um, and um, yeah, um, I mean, you use the same number of lines, but it's very secured. And that's it. Uh, just to recap, um, you know, public key cryptography. Uh, it, it it uses you know two keys, uh, and you, and you you need that for 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 TLS. And it's um, but but remember, if you're managing uh, your servers, you need to use the right ciphers. Uh, yeah, and then you, if you, you're coding Ruby, you make sure that you're using the right protocol. And uh, so um, that's it. Thank you. I'm Krigo in, in, <laughs> here in Brazil. Uh, yeah. So Nick also gave me the name Cristofando, but I search it's not Brazilian, so don't believe anything he says. So. Uh, if you want to use or, or um, if you want to try engineer, you could go to this uh, to this link. Um, um, you could uh, try it without uh, entering your credit card. So, yeah. and if you need any help, just come get me or PJ here if you have any questions. Thanks.